This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. And I am super hyped this week. This is a first year on Against Odds. Well, on one hand, it's a first. On another hand, we're revisiting one of my literal favorite cards of all time. We are playing Pioneer with a deck I'm calling Pioneer Amonicon, our first ever Pioneer Panharmonicon deck. I'm sure the first of many, and I am super excited. I love playing Panharmonicon decks more than basically anything in Magic, and Pioneer seems like the perfect kind of format for Panharmonicon. Not quite good enough for modern, at least for like real competitive decks because of how fast the format is. Not in standard anymore, so Pioneer seems like the perfect home. So we are taking Pioneer Monicon out for a spin, and let's jump into it, do a deck deck, start playing games. I can't wait. I want to do some Panharmonic cutting. So a quick reminder before we break down Pioneer Amonicon for Pioneer, of course. If you enjoy Against Odds and the other series here on the channel, it would be amazing of you. If you could take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Pioneer Amonicon, starting with Panharmonicon. So you probably know what this one does. Four mana artifact doubles up triggered abilities from permanents when they come into play. So basically in this deck, we're mostly using it with creatures. Idea is we play Pan Harmonicon, we play creatures with Enter the Battlefield triggers, we get to double trigger those, and thanks to the Pioneer card pool, we actually get some infinite combos built in as well. But mostly Pan Harmonicon, it's a value card. And one of the tricks of Pan Harmonicon is we have to take off turn four or a turn at least to play it. So we often kind of fall behind tempo wise when we take that turn off. So Pan Harmonicon is about falling behind, but then Pan Harmonicon being so powerful that we can catch back up after it hits the battlefield. So step one to any good Panharmonicon deck is lots of card draw. What we want to do is just keep our hand full constantly with Panharmonicon. So Thraben Inspector and our friend Flibblethip the Lost, these are our cheapest card draw spells with Panharmonicon. On one hand, then come down on turn one, on turn two, kind of stabilize the board, chump block, keep us alive, draw us a card, and then trust that eventually we'll get to Panharmonicon, and after we have Panharmonicon, these cards get even better once they double trigger. Thraben Inspector going to give us two clues for one mana, Flibblethip just a straight up draw a two for two, so they work well in stabilizing why we wait to get to Panharmonicon, and then good with Panharmonicon. And then, as I mentioned, Panharmonicon is about catching up in the late game, and for this, we have Cloud Blazer, and Cloud Blazer is the perfect card for Panharmonicon. If we take off turn four to play Panharmonicon, and can play a Cloud Blazer on turn five, we're immediately, along with a 2-2 two -two Fire, we're going to draw four cards and gain four life, so refill our hand, buff our life total so we're out of the danger zone. So Cloud Blazer is just the perfect perfect card draw spell with the deck, and then of course, which we'll talk about in a minute, we have t plenty of like flicker and blink effects, so once these cards are on the battlefield, we can reuse them again and again and again to draw more cards. So that's our card draw package. Then we have kind of our defensive package with Panharmonicon. For this, we have Reflector Mage, Deputy of Detention, and similar to like our Thraben and Thesh, Spectre, and Flibblethips, these cards are fine pre-Panharmonicon to stay alive. Reflector Mage, come down on turn three, bounce our opponent's best thing, buy us some time to we get to Panharmonicon, Deputy Detention, potentially sweeping away multiple things if they have the same name, and then after we have Panharmonicon, they get even better. Reflector Mage bouncing two things of our opponents. Deputy of Detention getting rid of all of two things of our opponents. So really good defensive spells for our deck as well. Then we have Spell Queller, which kind of doesn't work with Panharmonicon. I mean, there are weird fringe situations where we can exile two spells. Like, if we, I don't know, cast a Spell Queller, and then our opponent casts something to, like, target our Spell Queller, then we cast another Spell Queller, we could exile the thing targeting our Spell Queller, like a counter spell, and the original spell with the second Spell Queller. But for the most part, it just works well with our Blink and Flicker effects, so we can play it, kind of defend ourselves against spell-based decks. Our deck is really good at grinding against creature decks. We got life gain, we got bounce effects, we got tons of jump blockers, but Spell Queller, a little something to help against more controlling style decks, they don't have as many creatures. Then we have two of the best cards in our deck, our Blink cards, and 
Charming Prince, I gotta say, that's a card we've never gotten a chance to play with Panharmonicon before, and it is absurd. It is so good in this deck. So on one hand, Charming Prince comes down, can gain us three life, with Panharmonicon six life, so against aggro, that life swing is massive. It can also Scry 2, and Scry 2 is actually super valuable. On turn two, we can cast it, in Scry 2, hit our land drops, find our Panharmonicon, and then after we have Panharmonicon, we can either Scry really deep, or we can like Scry and gain some life, but most important, Importantly, it can also blink a creature. Exile one of our creatures, comes back into play in our end step. So for two mana, this gives us a way where we can reuse Cloud Blazer's Enter the Battlefield trigger. Maybe twice if we have Panharmonicon. We can reuse our Reflector Mage bounce ability. Maybe twice if we have Panharmonicon. Charming Prince is just so insane in this deck. And then to go along with Charming Prince, we also have Felidar Guardian. Just blink something when it comes into play. And Felidar Guardian is really nice in this deck. Not only a blink effect, but also one of our combo pieces. Uh, along with our finishers. So our big finishers on the top end, we have one Agent of Treasury, one copy of Angel of Serenity, and I know seven mana, it is a lot, even in a format like Pioneer, but we hit our land drops really well, we draw a lot of cards, eventually we find these, Agent of Treachery can come down and steal something, or maybe two things, or maybe everything in a way we'll talk about in a minute. Angel of Serenity, basically to get stuff back from our graveyard, since we are straight blue-white, we don't have like Eternal Witnesses or anything like that, but Angel of Serenity comes down, exiles three creatures from the battlefield or graveyard, and then when it leaves the battlefield, all those cards go back to their owner's hand. So this means we can get back an agent of treachery that ended up in the graveyard, some of our blink effects, some life gain effects, or we can just knock out our opponent's entire board, kind of like this weird wrath where it comes down, exiles all of our opponent's creatures, lets us get in a big attack. So these are the top end of our curve, and I mentioned we kind of have an infinite combo in the deck, and the infinite combo involves two Felidar Guardians and Panharmonicon, so this isn't really the center piece of our deck. It's more something that happens once in a while, but when it happens, it is super awesome. With two Felidar Guardians and Panharmonicon, what we can do is blink one Felidar Guardian with the other, and with the second trigger that we get from Panharmonicon, we can blink any other thing on the battlefield, which means with the help of our lands, we can keep blinking our lands to untap them, which makes infinite mana, and then we can start blinking things on our battlefield. Like, we can blink Cloud Blazer enough time to draw our entire deck, and also gain a big bunch of life, and then eventually as we draw our entire deck, we're gonna hit our Agent of Treachery, which then we cast our Agent of Treachery, then we cast another Felidar Guardian and start the blink loop again, and then we steal all of our opponent's permanents. Felidar Guardian and blink Felidar Guardian, Age of Treachery, Age of Treachery, steal a thing. The second Felidar Guardian triggers, blinks the first Felidar Guardian, and Age of Treachery again, steal another thing. So we literally get to steal all of our opponent's lands, creatures, planeswalkers, every permanent on the battlefield. So that is our end game. Like, most of the time we win just by outvaluing our opponent and drawing a ton of cards, and our opponent being like, all right, I just can't keep up with this card advantage with all these annoying, like, bounce effects and flicker effects. But if we do need to kill our opponent, we do have a combo finish to close things out. Otherwise, we have three Teferis, one Declaration in Stone. Teferi actually kind of helpful in two ways. For one thing, we can always just bounce one of our own creatures, so it's kind of like a weird, bad, expensive flicker effect. The other thing Teferi does is shut down interaction when we're ready to go for our combo. So if we're ready to go with the double Felidar Guardian Panharmonicon combo, we can sneak in a Teferi so our opponent can't cast spells, and then we don't have to worry about a Braid or Coligan's Command, or removal on a Felidar Guardian or something fizzling our combo. So good combo protection as well. One Declaration of Stone, just a little bit more removal. Then we have our mana base, which is actually pretty solid. We have 12 dual lands, Glacial Fortress, Hollow Fountain, Prairie Stream, mostly coming into play and tapped, along with a bunch of basic lands. In the sideboard, we get a bunch more removal options. Declaration of Stone for the early game, another deputy, settle the wreckage as a wrath for our opponent stuff, good against aggro. Lavinia, actually really sweet against aggro as well. When it comes into play, it detains all non-lands, converting mana cost four or less that our opponent controls which means uh, our opponent can't activate them or attack or block with them until the next turn. So if we're playing an aggro deck, we're able to like play this, fizzle our opponent's next turn, essentially, then maybe blink it with Felidar Guardian to fizzle another, maybe we bounce it with Teferi, cast it again. So once we get up to it, we are really good at shutting down aggro with Lavinio, and it has Pro Red, which is a nice upside as well. Then we have for control, Dovin's Vetoes and Spell Queller, and for especially Copycat, but also like Aetherworks Marvel, Teferi decks, anything with Planeswalkers, for Pithy Needle, uh, I think it's one of the best sideboard cards in the format, and that is Pioneer of Monocon, and that's our Against the Odds deck for this week. So let's jump into the gameplay, see if 
Panoramicon can work in the Pioneer format. I'm excited for this. It is going to be so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit with a wrap-up. All right, against the odds time, we are mulliganing with Pioneer Monicon. Oh, goodness. All right, well, uh, we got a Monicons. We got, we got nothing else. Okay. Uh, stuff we can cast. I mean, we do want Panharmonicon in this deck, but Panharmonicon is kind of our finisher. We really want to, like, play things, kind of stabilize, and then Panharmonicon to win the game. Having Exeter, only Panharmonicons. Not, uh, not ideal. Even though we are a Panharmonicon deck. That said, a couple of three drops are not bad draws. Lango. Don't know what our opponent's up to. Some sort of gruel deck. Bone it. Pass it. Well, play a Plains. Spell Queller is actually a good draw, too. We will also pass the turn. Leave up our Spell Queller. Stomping Grounds. Untapped. We will quell anything our opponent plays here. Uh, including Surak. Alright, Spell Queller. Get rid of you. Opponent. Pass it. Play an Island. Run out. Panharmonicon. Step one. Go to combat. Get in with Spell Queller. Let the fun begin! We got one down! One Fader Bodicon! Another in hand, too. Things can get pretty crazy here. Opponent. Champion of Rona. So they're trying to put big things into play. That would have been scary with haste. Opponent passes. We draw. Cloud Blazer. Uh, okay, we're gonna play this safe-ish. Teferi Time Raffler. Hopefully we hit a land. Bounce Champion. Land. Ugh, Agent of Treachery. Alright, well, get him with Spell Queller. We are hoping to draw land to play Flibblethip as well. We have to not let our opponent put something massive into play. That's uh, that's plan A. Opponent kills the fairy, sure. Sylvan carry added, also sure. Come on, land for Cloud Blazer. Land? All right, that works. Prairie Stream. Well, we will go blazing. <laughs> Smoke him if you got him. Cloud Blazer doubles it up. Ooh, Charming Prince. Those were good ones. We will pass the turn. Well, actually, let's get in with Spell Queller. Pass the turn. I don't even know what we discard here. Um, we will discard... Jeez, as good as Charming Prince is, I think we discard it. We want the land. We do want to get to Agent of Treachery with these Panharmonicons. Now we got a couple of options, depending on what our opponent does. Opponent. Surah. Thankfully not hasty yet. Opponent passes. Hmm. I'll play the land. Play Deputy of Detention. Get rid of Surah go to combat. Oh man, this is Panharmonicon. Panharmonicon dreams. Get in. Hit our opponent to eight. This is what the deck could do. Thraben Inspector. Clue it up. Times two. Panharmonicon. Then Charming Prince. Panharmonicon All-Star Charming Prince. We will uh, exile a Cloud Blazer. We will scry two. Bottom one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll keep a land. We want a land because that gets us to Agent of Treachery. So we get to draw a land and a bunch of other stuff off these two Cloud Blazers. Oh, man. I forgot how awesome Panharmonicon is. It is, oh, man. It is a thing of beauty, and it's working in Pioneer. What do you got to vote it? <laughs> oh, we've just tempoed them out. We've just completely tempoed them out. Opponent, Champion of Ronas, makes its return. That's acceptable. Opponent passing. I'll play Glacial Fortress. Hmm. Yeah, I mean let's let's just go big. Go all the way. Agent of Treachery. Come to us, Champion of Rodas. <laughs> wow, this was a dominating pan Panharmonicon performance. <laughs> Woo! Our opponent didn't get to do anything. Oh, we just Panharmonic'd him right out of the game. Okay. Uh so opponent. They gotta be trying to cheat, like, Emrakul's World Spine Worms into play. I think that means that... Hmm. How do we want to fight this, is the question. I'm not sure the best answer to that question. The tempo plan worked pretty well. What can we... Maybe we can go down Angel of Serenity. Maybe go down a Flibble Fip. Go up the Settle the Wreckages. And... Hmm. I get... Our opening hand was... That was the most panharmonicon -y opening hand you can imagine. Two panharmonicons and lands. And it ended up being a dominant performance. I'm tempted to go down one panharmonicon in this matchup. Let's go down a panharmonicon for a deputy. And yeah, run it like that. Settles. Settles gives us a way to deal with stuff that is... I'm assuming they're trying to put like Ilharogs and whatnot into play. So Settle gives us a way to deal with that. Uh, we will keep. No real removal, but... We get redraws, we get scries, so that's fine. And eventually, uh, eventually Cloud Blazer. Probably the best card in Pioneer. 
Opponent stomping grounds tap. Passes. Well, prairie stream. Goo. We might just Charming Prince. The value of Scry 2 is pretty high. Sylvan carry added. Opponent. Because we can potentially hit some removal or something. Planes. Yeah, let's just... Let's just Charming Prince. I think that's better than drawing with Flibble Fip here. Scry 2. Um, bottom, bottom. Yeah, we don't need either either of those. Pass the turn. The risk is they get to cheat like an Emrakul or World Spine Worm into play and we don't find an answer. That's the easiest way we can lose. Pwn it. Rhythm of the... Okay. That's frightening. Untap. Settle, but not for this turn. Now, let's... Flibble Fip, draw a card. Tap land. Ooh! Okay, I am very scared. I am very scared. Something huge might be coming into play here. Opponent. Untaps. All right, opponent. Let's see it. Let's see it. Tap land. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. We dodge a bullet. Untap. Oh. Um, well, let's Raven Inspector. Make a clue. Planes. Go to combat. Attack, attack. We're trusting that the Spell Queller is going to keep us safe. But maybe that's greedy. Champion Aronas. Whoo! We aren't countering. We are not countering it. No counters here. We are just quelling your desire to kill us with this Champion Aronas. Opponent. <laughs> Passes. Untap. Charming Prince. Now go to combat. All attack. Opponent blocks. Drops to 11. Ugh, Hollowed Fountain Pass. We're going to leave Upsettle this turn. Opponent, untaps. Ooh, Sweltering Suns. All right. Well, there goes our board. Opponent gets back Champion. All right, that's scary. Oh, opponent just puts a counter on it? All right. Well, we will second clue, draw a card. Untap. Hmm. All right, let's Charming Prince. Scry. Put on top. Put on top. To fairy. Bounce champion. Are we Veil of Summering? Play Prairie Stream. Pass the turn. Who? I mean, our opponent can put it back into play with haste, so this doesn't really solve the issue necessarily. Opponent plays a tap lad. A champion of Ronas. Going haste. All right, let's see what they can put into play. That's the real question. Potent. It's in. Oh, no exert. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll block with Charming Prince, I think. Block with Charming Prince. Untap. Take up to Fairy. Charming Prince. Scry. Top and top. All right. Well, Agent of Treachery could potentially come down next turn. Uh, opponent. Mountain. Combat. Attacks to Fairy. Well, we're going to block again. We want to keep to fairy because it means we can't get Veiled of Summered when we go to cast this Agent of Treachery. Untap. Planes. Agent of Treachery. Step one. Yoink Arino on Champion Aronas. Take up to fairy. All right. No Panharmonic on this game, but our deck is still doing its thing. Pass the turn. I'm still a little worried about this Rhythm of the Wild. We can get rid of it next turn if nothing goes wrong. <laughs> Potent. Champion Aronas. With haste. Goes to combat. Attacks to fairy. We'll block. That does mean we don't get to keep blinking Agent Aronas, but I think it's kind of worth it. So we get to take up to fairy. Go to combat. Exert. Put Cloud Blazer into play. Draw some cards. Hit our opponent to eight. Play Felidir Guardian. Blink Cloud Blazer. Draw some cards. Play... Declaration in Stone. Get rid of the champion. Glacial Fortress. Charming Prince. Cloud Blazer again. Oh man. If only we had a Panharmonicon uh, out. Play Cloud Blazer. And get back Cloud Blazer. Pwn's gonna sack the clue. That's fine. I mean, there's still some risk of some big hasty thing ruining our day. That's our only concern here. Something hasty, or rather like two hasty things. Like, Ilharg into World Spine Worm or something could be very frightening. Otherwise, our deck is doing what we want it to do. Oh, opponent gives us a GG, said they drew too many lands, and 
That was a good better Monicon. Well, Pioneer Monicon performance. Not bad at all. Sweet, 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 sweet. Whoo, that felt good. Better Monicon. Oh, it's so much fun. Maybe this is a format. Maybe this is the format. Finally, for Better Monicon to shine. We'll dig it. All right. Against the odds time, we are playing Pioneer Monicon. <laughs> In Pioneer, of course. And, eh. This hand's okay. It's not insane. The only good news is Charming Prince is great. And Charming Prince scrying two on turn two hopefully will set things up while we wait to get this Panharmonic on. At least make sure that we're not drawing more lands that we don't need. So not an insane hand, but we got Panharmonic on. Can't complain about that. Mm, all right. So Hollowed Fountain tapped. Ship the turn. Uh, boon it. Ether Hub. All right. Energy action. Should be interesting. And Elvish Mystic. Hmm. Okay. Well, Glacial Fortress, Charming Prince. Maybe our opponents... This could be, like, Mono Green Eldrazi. Scry 2. Well, Prairie Stream Bottom, Cloud Blazer. We're going to keep it on top. I'm a smidge concerned about Thought Not Seer stealing our Panharmonicon. As long as that doesn't happen, Panharmonica and Cloud Blazer, it's about as good as it gets. Gilded Goose. Oh, maybe this is a Oko deck. That's also possible. Opponent passing. Well, we will Charming Prince. Scry 2. Hmm. Uh, yeah, put on top, put on top. Hollowed Fountain. Get in with Charming Prince. I will say that... If this is an Oko deck, and Gilded Goose makes me think Oko, um, we might not want to just run out Panharmonicon into its almost inevitable elking. Oh, elks. I always kind of liked elks, but Oko's making me hate elks. Like, if I ever saw an elk in real life, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not much for, like, hunting or killing animals, but I would be tempted <laughs> if it was an elk. Thanks to Oko, you're doing this to me, wizards. <laughs> Found it. Uh, I probably, I actually wouldn't shoot an elk. Or any animal, but if there was an animal I would consider shooting, it would be an elk. What do you got, opponent? We getting Oko'd? Oh, Rogue Refiner. Okay, that's not an Oko. Ooh, no land? All right, we're, we gotta go for it. We gotta go for it. We got to. Go to combat. Attack. I mean, we gotta try to live the dream here. Get it. Pwn it. Takes it. Well, all right. Play an island. Run out. Pioneer Monogon. No Oko. No Oko. <laughs> Pwned. Yes. Yes. Pwned kept the Mana Dork one lander, which is a little bit risky. Especially when one of those Mana Dorks is a Gilded Goose, which doesn't make mana every turn without a bit of work. Opponent. Gilded Goose. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Gets food for Gilded Goose. Llanowar Elves. Oh, this is an interesting turn. Maybe it's not that interesting. It could be... There's probably a world where it's correct to... Thraben Inspector plus Spell Queller, but... We have a Panharmonicon and a Cloud Blazer in hand. How can we say no to... Draw 4, gain 4? Like... How can, how can we turn that down? We're playing better Monicon. <laughs> this is what we do. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong, we're, we're triggering better Monicons and drawing cards. Ooh, Teferi Flibblethip. One of the reasons that Teferi is in this deck, honestly, is so we can pick up our Panharmonicon after it's been elked. Jeez, I've... Uh, <laughs> Arath would basically be Armageddon here. Opponent would have one an Aether Hub with one energy. Opponent... They're also down to 12, just incidentally. Opponent, what do you got? White mana. Okay. Teferi? Teferi. Interesting. Bounce our Cloud Blazer, please. Hey, right, bounces, bounces our Pandermonicon. Ooh. And Oath. Oh, is this Copycat? This might be Copycat. This looks like Copycat. Opponent, Othanissa. Gets a Temple Garden. Sure. Temple Garden. Untapped. Elvish Mystic. All right, opponent passing. Ooh, that's interesting. Go to combat. Attack to Fairy Time Raveler. Okay, 
play Prairie Stream, Declaration in Stone, get rid of a couple Elvish Mystics, Teferi, bounce Llanowar Elves, Thraben Inspector, pass the turn. Opponents back down to two mana. They have clues, but I can't imagine they're going to have time to actually, actually crack them. Opponent. Oh, they're out of energy, too. Oh, whoo, that was a blowout. What do you got about it? I guess Oath of Nissa does help if it's Planeswalkers, but... <gasps> the Desperate Clue Cracketing. Opponent. Passes. Prairie Stream. That's not bad. Go to Combat. All out attack at our opponent, and we might have this one locked up. Opponent takes, ooh, only takes two. Throws away a goose, sure. Well, now we can play it safe. Take up to Fairy. Panharmonicon. Leave up Spell Queller. Pass the turn. Now I think we're in the how can we lose part of the game. I will say our opponent, I mean, they did keep a one lander at the same time. They've seen 17 cards and have two lands, which, uh... That's not a lot. That is not a lot. Huh. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Other than a million mana dorks, we didn't actually see a whole lot of our opponent's deck. And I'm not sure what that means. Like, should we be bringing in the Pithing Needles? Let's go down the Angel. We'll keep Agent of Treachery. Like, are we supposed to be vetoing and Pithing needle and Needling? Is this a... It's got to be an Oko deck, right? I assume? All right, let's go up to... Okay, let's go two Pithy Needles, two, declara two more Declaration in Stones, down Thraben Inspector Flibblefip. Also, Deputy Detention seems really good. Let's go up another Deputy as well for a... Another Flibblefip? Actually, let's let's trim one Panharmonicon. Oko is a pretty good answer to Panharmonicon. Oh, I wish I had a better understanding of what our opponent was doing. That's making sideboarding hard, because all we saw is Teferi and a million mana dorks. Also Oath of Nyssa, which makes me think copycat, but maybe it's... I don't know. I don't know. We'll probably learn more this match. Unlikely that our opponent has the old two-lander again. Eh, all right. Sure, sure, sure. We got a needle. Uh, opponent's doing some mulliganing. Uh, I'm, in one hand, I'm kind of not surprised. It is hard to play, like, three-plus color decks. I was very tempted to try to be, like, Bant Panharmonicon, Esper Panharmonicon, but it's just so hard to be three-color decks in this format. Breeding pool. Untap. Ooh, tapped. No mana dork. All right. Well, Prairie Stream. No. Gonna wait on the needle until we actually learn a bit more of what our opponent's doing and but it's gotta be it's gotta be like four color copycat play a prairie stream charming prince scry two hmm charming prince bottom to fairy yeah i guess also bottom pass the turn we kind of just want to hit lands at this point i think botanical sanctum opponent is yeah max greed three not only two colors three colors about it to fairy time raffler bounce his charming prince all right draws a card now play a planes play our own to fairy to get up past the turn this does mean we don't get to kill our opponents to fairy next turn opponent takes up to fairy this is going to be interesting can we afford to take a turn off for panharmonicon untap flibble thip blink it with charming prince is a ton of value and we'll see what our opponent does opponent there's the Oko. Oh no. Makes a food. Yah, yah, yah. Well, opponent passing. I'll play the land. Now we definitely can't pan Harmonicon. So I think we Charming Prince. Scry 2. Pan Harmonicon bottom. Glacial Fortress top. Pithing Needle. Yeah, we definitely want all four needles now that we see what's happening. On Oko Thief of Crowds. Take up to fairy. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent. Taking up to fairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Felidair Guardian. I'm gonna blink to fairy. Okay. I guess our opponent can, like, bounce Pithing Needle to get one activation out of Oko. Yeah, it looks like that's what our opponent's gonna do. Play as a tap land. And. Interesting. Okay. 
That's actually pretty fine. Opponent passes. We play Glacial Fortress. We play Charming Prince. We Flicker Charming Prince. Ugh. I'm worried about Sahili killing us. One, two, three, four. Hmm. We might be dead either way. Uh, play Flibblethip draw card. Play Pithing Needle on Oko. Yeah, take up to Fairy. All right, no Sahili. No Sahili, please. Charming Prince returns. We will scry two. I mean, if they have Sahili here, we just die. Bottom and bottom. All right. Let's see it, opponent. Do you have it? Do you have it? Wow, we just saw such a weird, weird hand in game one. If we can fade this turn, we can potentially, like, kill Oko, reset Pithy Needle to Sahili. Actually, we can potentially kill Oko and Teferi, reset Pithy Needle to Sahili, and then we're in much safer shape. But if they have Sahili this turn, they get us. Potent. Ooh, Knight of Autumn. All right. Hell, that's another way to get rid of the needle. Turn on the Oko. Sure. Well, now we gotta kill it. We gotta kill it, uh, fairly. Thankfully, we're kind of in a position to do that. Although, we're in a scary position because of Sahili in specific. Opponent makes a food. Sure. Takes up to fairy. Gilded Goose. Opponent. Passing. All right. Ooh, Declaration in Stone. That we like. We like that a lot. So now we get to... Declaration in Stone, Felidar Guardian. Bounce Knight of Autumn, draw a card. Go to combat. Everything at Oko. Kill Oko. The only thing that would have made that better was hitting a land. Pass the turn. <laughs> Opponent's got a nice <laughs> mismatch of artifact tokens. Opponent. Cracks a clue, draws a card. Ether Hub. Sure. Gilded Goose. Oh, another Declaration in Stone would be sweet. And Knight of Autumn, again. Knight of Autumn. Yup. As a 3-4. Opponent. Passing. Oh, boy. All right. A uh, bounce. Knight of Autumn. Ugh. Go to combat. Everything at Teferi. Opponent blocks. And blocks. Okay. Well, we will run out a Cloud Blazer. Draw some cards. Pass the turn. Oh, we got a lot. Okay, we got to fade this turn, and then we have some good defense. One, if they have exactly Felidare Sahili, we still die here. Pwn it. Wild Slash. Takes down our Teferi. All right. We did kind of want that. But that makes it less likely that we're going to literally die this turn. Knight of Autumn. Returns. Are we just about to take down, like, the best deck in the format? Yup. Yup, yup. Elvish Mystic. Sure. Takes up Teferi. Opponent. Passing. Uh, we untap. Go to combat. Attack to fairy. Kill to fairy. Hmm. Opponent's got one card in hand. Well, let's Thraben Inspector. Get a clue. Pass the turn. Yeah, I think we gotta wait. Gotta wait and see. We want to be doing more, but it's... Because this is a combo deck, if we're not careful, it's possible we just die out of nowhere. Opponent. No attacks. Well, crack the clue draw card. Mm, charming Prince. There's a land. Hollowed Fountain untapped. Go to combat. Get him with Cloud Blazer. Hit our opponent. We're almost to where we want to be. Yup. Opponent. Down to 18. Charming Prince. Flicker Cloud Blazer. Pithing Needle. And we're going to name Sahili. On Sahili. Pass the turn. Get back Cloud Blazer. Draw a couple cards. And a pulse scoops it up? Whoo! Taking down the scariest combo deck of the format, Panormonicon style. Pony had Okos, Pony had Teferis, they had them all, and it wasn't enough to overcome the Panormonicon value. Sweet, sweet. All right, against the odds time, we are mm, mulliganing with Pioneer Monicon, <laughs> the best Monicon, hopefully, and this hand looks pretty good. The question is, what do we put to the bottom? It might just be Thrabes. Ugh. Actually, you know what? I think we can put a land to the bottom. 
I mean, between Thraben Inspector, Flibblefip, and Charming Prince, we should be able to get to our lands. Thraben Inspector, go. Yeah, I think that's fine. Charming Prince is so good. Like, the Scry 2 is so nice. Opponent plays a tap land and passes. Well, let's see if we draw a land or not. Reflector Mage. Well, since it's Reflector Mage, we're going to Charming Prince. Scry 2. More guaranteed to hit us a land than Flibs here. Uh, yeah, Scry 2. Ugh. All right, bottom, bottom. Oh, uh, well, after that big talk about being able to hit our lands... <laughs> I mean, I guess we get two more draws, so we still should be fine, although that is a little scary. Opponent, down to 19. We getting Abzanded? Junded? Mana Confluence, sure. Oh, the painful three-color mana base. Opponent. Grizzly Salvage. Ew. Delirium? <gasps> Zatapa Soul Flare! Uh, okay. Well... There is good news. There is good news. Uh, oh, they dumped this whole flare. The good news is, unless they can get it hexproof, we can reflect our mages. So it doesn't just kill us. We draw land. Well, in that case, we will flibblethip draw a card. I am definitely want to try this whole flare deck at some point in, in Pioneer, because it seems like it could actually be good. Get in. Hitting our land drops. Saving reflector mage for a potential soul flare. I mean, haste... Double strike, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Regenerate. That's fine. Like, we take a big hit, but then we get to bounce it. So we still should be okay. Yeah, I assume we're getting Zatalpa. We actually don't have... <laughs> we actually don't have much interaction for this. Opponent gets in for eight. Our graveyard hate is basically non-existent. Down to ten. Yeah. Over on tomb. Tapped. Well, it's bounce time. Reflector mage. Bound Soul Flayer. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Down to 10. Opponent had a nice turn 3. We'll see. Reflector Mage was a big deal there. Opponent untaps. Thankfully, they didn't have Hexproof. Gather the pack. All right, there's a Samet. Okay. Well, it can come back next turn, but it doesn't just kill us. Opponent plays a tap lat. Passes. Well... I think we just have to Clouds Blazer. I don't think we have the time to run out Panharmonicon here. Reflector Mage is good. That is very, very good. Attack, attack, attack. We'll leave Black Flibblefip for potential blocking purposes. Pona goes to five. All right, all right, all right. So they can get Double Strike Vigilance Haste, but that's it? So a chump block from our friend Flib saves us, I think? Unless our opponent has more ways to get things in the graveyard. Opponent. Lotlith Troll. Okay. Well, that's a way to discard things. Can they discard a combination of things that lets them kill us? Hexproof is the scariest. Opponent. Zatalpa. Sure. Zatalpa. Sure. I think we're still okay. Opponent goes to four, thanks to Mana Confluence. Scary Soul Flare. Double Strike. Flying. Haste. Indestructible. Trample. Vigilance. Goes to combat. Gets in. Hits us to four. But we drew another Reflector Mage. Sure. We drop to four. Mana Confluence. Opponent passes. Well, we will Reflector Mage. Oh, and got the GG's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Reflector Mage saves the day. Oh, dear. Well, now I wish we had Graveyard Hate, which we don't. We don't actually have much that... I mean, Settle the Wreckage seems very key. That's one of the few ways to answer this once once it gets going. I guess we can go down Spell Quellers. We didn't see many good Queller targets. Um, huh. So, Settle gets around Hexproof. I guess Deputy does things too, and maybe Declaration in Stone? Uh, what do we cut is the question. I guess we're going to go three Panharmonicons again. We tend to do that fairly often. One Flibblefip for a deck in stone. One... Eh, can we cut something big? Maybe one Angel for deck in stone? Run out like that? I feel like we got a little lucky to win that one. Well, this is a easy mulligan. <laughs> no lands, no keep. Good rule of thumb for Pioneer. And actually every format. Oh my god. So slow. All right. I mean, ooh, not confident in this hand at all, but I think I'd rather keep it than go to five. 
We're on the draw, and we don't really get to do anything until turn million, but all right. Hopefully we draw some earlier game stuff. Opponent, what you got, what you got? Reflector Mage seems like the most important, followed by Deputy of Detention, probably. Maybe Deck and Stone. It really depends. If they can also get Hexproof, then things become a lot harder. Well, all right. Thought sees. Good news is our hand was pretty bad. <laughs> so losing a four or five drop doesn't actually hurt us much. There goes Felidar Guardian. Opponent passing. Well, there's Pinharmonicon. Well, if we're alive, Panharmonicon into Cloud Blazer is a lot of value. But will we live that long? Opponent, Manicon Fluids. I'm sure they have some graveyardy thing. Gather the pack. Well, there's Kermanicor and Samet. All right. Answers, please. That is a super fast clock. Opponent, passing. Nope. Planes go. Ooh, maybe we should have went to five. Come on, Reflector Mage! Reflector Mage! Oh, we're taking a lot of damage here. Huh, maybe we need a real graveyard hate. I was not expecting Kermana Flare opponent. Do you have Soul Flare? Oh boy, looks like yes. Uh, so we need to draw Deputy of Detention, Declaration in Stone, or Reflector Mage. And we pretty much got one turn, maybe two turns. Land. Ugh. Yeah, I guess we should have kept mulliganing. Pass the turn. Well, we technically get one more turn. Sort of. Blooming Marsh. Opponent. Gather the pack. Well, our opponent seems very all in on this plan. Not a great gather the pack. Well, it all comes down to this top deck. Can we top deck something to keep us alive? Opponent gets it. Hits us. Sure. To four. One turn to draw it. I guess Teferi is technically in out here too. Deathrite Shaman. Ugh. Settle the wreckage too. Nope. All right. Well, eh, what can you say? <laughs> we uh, we did not draw anything. Do we want to change anything? Yeah, I think the answer is no. Run it back. Run it back. That was just uh, not a great hand. We were hoping it would develop with the top of our deck, and it certainly did not. I mean, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 answers by turn 4. Assuming it's not hexproof. All right, we get to play first. Well, this has all of our answers, but none of our lands to cast them. All right. Well, this will keep. We got to hope it's not not a hexproof soul flare. If it's a hexproof soul flare, the news is very bad. Opponent's keeping seven. Don't like that. Well, flip both at bottom. Hollowed fountain tapped. But we do have multiple ways of dealing with a soul flare if it's not hexproof. If it is hexproof, we got to find a settle. Opponent untaps. Overgrow tomb. Tapped. Passes. Well, glacial Fortress. Run out a flibble thip. Draw card. Alright. Oh, please. No seven carry added in the graveyard. Anything but that. Pote. Thought sees. Well, I get a peek at our hand. Now they know. I assume they take Teferi. Yeah, Teferi down. Opponent. Blood Crypt. Tapped. Well, something we could cast would be nice. Opponent passes. Well, Hollowed Fountain tapped. Cloud, made, uh, Cloud Blazer could be good in a couple turns. That Teferi would have been very nice. Get in with Flibble that Pass the turn. Opponent. Lotlith Troll. All right, gonna stock the graveyard. Blood Crypt. Tapped. Opponent passing. Well, we will... Deputy of Detention. Hazarat. Okay, Indestructible Haste. Okay, that's that's pretty fine. Not hexproof. Oh man. Come on, land! Land for Cloud Blazer, please! Please, Magic Gods, you can do it. Opponent had very strong hands in game one and game two. This one's looking a bit slower. Boat it. Is it the sad soul flare? Yeah, you know, it's a sad soul flare. That's fine. Haste and indestructible. We will just take four. Still wouldn't mind a land. If we draw a land, I think we still cloud blaze, actually. Now, well, that, that sort of works. Thraben Inspector, get a clue. I'm actually, I think we wait. I think we do. Let's just crack the clue. Go to combat. Get in with Deputy. Yeah, I mean, we can just chump block this turn. I actually kind of like having a non-hexproof soul flare, because that means if another one comes down with hexproof, Deputy can still get rid of it. We would still love to draw a land, though. Opponent. Flip with it. Very good chump blocker, since it's legendary. Combat, attacks... Flibble Thip, yeah, 
You did your duty. Draw a card. Throw yourself in front of a... <laughs> a demon. Well done, Flibs. I hope you find yourself. Pona passes. Land. Ugh. Well, okay. Hmm. Now let's... Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Down to 13. Charming Prince. Blink. Thraben Inspector. Prairie Stream. Oh, we've had Tapland Central this game. Get back there, Aben Inspector. Pass the turn. Well, we know we're getting to Cloud Blazer next turn. So we're still in fine shape. Thankfully, this is just a medium Soul Flare rather than a devastating Soul Flare. Ponet, got back. Gets in with Soul Flare. Sure. We will block. Our deck is pretty good at jump blocking. Crack a clue. Ooh, Panharmonicon. Oh, it's so tempting. Eh, let's wait. Let's wait. We have two Cloud Blazers. Let's run out one. Draw some cards, gain some life. Go to combat. Get in with Deputy. Still gonna stay conservative with our attacks. We didn't draw land, which is awkward. Uh, opponent. Ooh, Samet. Okay. Combat. Attacks. Well, actually, block Samet. Take our beats. Untap. Reflector Mage. Bounce Samet. Combat. Attack. Oh, I wish we had a Panharmonicon down for this. We just haven't drawn enough lands, really. Get in. Hit our opponent. To nine. Charming Prince. Blink Cloud Blazer. Yeah. End step. Draw cards. Gain life. 16. Give us lands. All right. There's this land. So eventually we're going to be able to get out of this Panharmonicon. I don't know. We might have already won the game by the time that happens. Opponent, combat, no attacks. All right, let's go for it. Panharmonicon, Prairie Stream. Pass the turn. Play some defense. Oh, our opponent could have flashed in Samet since it was our turn. They don't have to wait until their next turn, just until our next turn. Opponent, Samet, sure. Wait, are we going to get to untap with Panharmonicon? Big attack. Well, we will. Block, take four. We draw so many cards that we can really afford to keep chump blocking like this. Down to 12. Tap land for our opponent. Well, let's... Declaration of Stone Samet. Glacial Fortress. Blaze them. <laughs> uh, yep. Draw four. Gate four. Back up to 16. Well, there... <laughs> we have found all the lands we were waiting for. Go attacking. Hit our opponent. Down to four. Pass the turn. Discard a land. Put it. Untaps. Well, all right. All right, all right. Can you kill us somehow, opponent? Hopefully not. An opponent scoops it up. And Panharmonicon. That was close. We got to see the power of Soul Flayer and Pioneer in uh, the first two games. But we got there in the end. Panharmonicon eventually comes through. And the stack seems pretty good. I like it. <laughs> I mean, that's probably not a surprise, but it is sweet. Sweet, sweet. All right. Against the odds time, we are Pioneer Monoconing. Pioneer Panharmonicon. And I'm super happy that we finally get to play Panharmonicon again. Uh, we will keep this. Agent Treachery in our opener, not ideal, but eh, eh, good enough. Thraben Inspectors can smooth out our draws. We have Banner Monogon. We got Cloud Blazer. Seems fine. Uh, yeah. We'll keep. See what our opponent's up to. Yav Maya Coast. And Land of Elves. Yup. Mm, Alright, let's Planes and Thraben Inspector. Ship the turn. Is this a Oko deck? Yav Maya Coast makes me wonder if it's Eldrazi. Kind of a weird dual choice unless you need colorless mana. Bone it. Ooh, okay. Probably an Oko deck. Another Yab Maya Coast. Hollowed Fountain. Sahili combo, maybe? Uh, opponent. Passes. Well, Hollowed Fountain, untapped. Run out, Flibblethip. Draw card. Eey. Missing on lands is not ideal. We do need to hit our land drops, or this could go bad in a hurry. What do you got, opponent? Yeah, this has got to be definitely a Sahili combo deck. Uh, opponent. Vanifar. And we don't actually have an answer for that at the moment, unfortunately. Hmm. Alright, I think we're dead. Oh my god, and it's not a land. Um. Alright, well, normally I would scoop here, but 
let's see how Pioneer Vanifar wins. Sahili, oh, all right. Well, now it's pretty simple. Zek, Lanamore, get Corridor Monitor into Renegade Rallier, into Corridor Monitor, into Felidar Guardian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we weren't going to win this one because we were not hitting land drops anyway. Rallier, Corridor Monitor, untaps. Yep, yep, yep. And now Infinite, Felidar Guardians. Yeah, sure. So we get to bring in a play set of Pithing Needles and probably two Spell Quellers. Uh, do we want the Spell Quellers? The problem is to opposing uh, to fairies can ruin all of this. We can go down Angel of Serenity. We can go down... I think it's going to be all the Thraben Inspectors. And we could just bring in more Declaration in Stones, too. And Deputies. Ugh, maybe we got to go to an Agent of Treachery. We just need anything that can interact. And probably, sadly, one Banner Monogod. Run it like that. Well, that, uh, that was pretty uh pretty blowouty see if our play set of pithing needles saves our day we get to play first eh all right seems fine we do have a needle no panharmonicon no card draw value but reflector mage our opponent's playing a creature deck so reflector mage probably helpful all right opponent keeps seven let's prairie stream prairie stream go uh, opponent once upon a time for Vanifar. Yup. Temple Garden. Untapped. Oath of Nyssa. Well, opponent's mana is going to be good. Gets a land of war. Opponent passes. Um, yeah, Hallowed Fountain. Tapped. Pass the turn. Not going to run out our needle yet. We'll wait. The sooner we run it out, the sooner our opponent knows they have to answer it. There's land of war. Breeding Pool. Untapped. And more Oath of Nyssa's sure for elvish mystic yep opponent passing now glacial fortress run out reflector mage bounce land of war ship the turn opponent mystic and passing action eh, to fairy's fine play a land go to combat get in with reflector mage um yeah let's just reflector mage all right, opponent cast once upon a time. Gets a temple garden. Well, we'll bounce. Piffing needle on Sahili Rai. Since we can answer Vanifar with declaration in stone. Uh, opponent. I mean, in a perfect world, they run out Vanifar. We untap, bounce it with Teferi. Then they run out Vanifar again. We declaration in stone it. All right, opponent's not going to do that. Instead, Llanowar Elves. And... And passing? Interesting. I'll play the planes. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent down to 10. Play to fairy. Hmm. Bounce land of war. Flibble fip. Pass the turn. I mean, this is going much better than game one. I mean, hitting lands is going a long way. We're just kind of like tempoing our opponent out and we're almost to Panharmonicon. We could almost run Sahili in this deck, honestly. Is it Vanifar time? Yup. That's fine. Opponent passing. So we get to... This is pretty sweet. We get to take up to fairy. Play a planes. Play Felidare Guardian. Blink to fairy. To fairy. Bounce Vanifar. Go to combat. Attack. Hit our opponent. Down to five. And bounce it all. Bounce it all. We haven't stuck a Panharmonicon, but it's working. Just bounce, 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 bounce. An opponent's pretty close to dead. And they need an answer to Pithy Needle to combo. What you got about it? I'd still like a game where we go infinite with Panharmonicon and Felidar Guardian. We haven't had one of those yet. An opponent scoops it up. And that went pretty well. I have to say, that went very well. Uh, do we want to change anything else? Eh, run it back. Run it back, do the same thing, this time being on the draw. Feels like a tricky Panharmonicon matchup for Panharmonicon itself. Hard to find the window to take enough time off to get it down sometimes. All right, on to game number three. Can we overcome the most busted combo, theoretically, in Pioneer with Panharmonicon? Uh, not with this hand. 
One land, not gonna do it here. Uh, yes, we will mulligan. Well, this will keep. We'll put Cloudblazer to the bottom. Yeah, this isn't a great hand. We do have a Pithing Needle, which is something. Temple Garden, untapped. Bone it. Elvish Mystic. Passes. Mmm, Prairie Stream, go. Yeah, Maya Ghost. And Oko, Thief of Crowns. Yeah, that's a hassle. Now we're gonna have to needle Oko, unfortunately. Which kind of leaves us open to combos. Wow, okay. That I was not expecting. Um, Pithing Needle on Oko, Thief of Crowns. Hollowed Fountain tapped past the turn. Wow, opponent cut off their mana source. I'm very surprised by that. I don't think our opponent's gonna beat us by being the aggro deck. Opponent gets in, hits us. Down to 17. Llanowar Elves. Passes. Glacial Fortress. Pass the turn. Kinda would like a Banner Monica now, actually. Knight of Autumn. Uh, yeah. That's definitely spelled Quellerable. So, Queller Knight of Autumn. Breeding Pool. Tapped. Opponent gets in. We will take it. Down to 14. And we draw an island. Well, Glacial Fortress. Go to combat. Attack Oko. And pass the turn. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. What do you got about it? We still want to get the Oko off the battlefield because we see the Knight of Autumns. We know our opponent has potential answers. Opponent gets in. Hits us. Down to 10. Yup. Follow up. Land. And. Corridor monitor. Sure. Untaps the 3-3. Three, three. Opponent passes. I'll play the island. Go to combat. Attack Oko. Down to one. Cloud Blazer. Draw some cards. Oh, it'd be so nice to get down Panharmonicon first, but I think we gotta wait. Pass the turn. Felidaire Guardian's not bad. We're getting close to where we want to be. Pote. We have a blocker. We're at 12. Oko's about to die. Are we really just gonna beat the best deck in the format? Pona goes attacking. I mean... I don't know what tricks you got, but we're going to block with our blazer. Go to nine. Elvish Mystic. Opponent passes. Play the island. Go to combat. Attack Oko. Uh, yeah, attack Oko. Get it off the battlefield. Oh, I want to wait one more turn before we... Hmm. Let's Reflector Mage. Bounce the Mystic. Pass the turn. I want to wait until we can leave up the Spell Queller and play our Panharmonicon. There's still a risk that we just get comboed off out of nowhere. That's what we gotta try to prevent. Opponent, combat, passes. Well, let's go to combat, get in with Cloud Blazer, hit our opponent, run out Felidaire Guardian, blink Cloud Blazer, draw a couple cards. Play the land. Okay, next turn. Next turn could be a Panharmonica turn, and then we're where we want to be. Opponent. Finding another Pithy Needle wouldn't be bad, or I guess we can reset it. One, two. And a Pone Scoops it up. We got him. We got him. We got him. And Panharmonica. Maybe this is a legit deck at Pioneer. Taking on all comers. Taking down Felidaire Guardian combo. Copycat. With Vanivar, which I've heard some rumblings about that deck being really good. All right. Sweet, sweet. All right against the odds time we are playing some pioneer monocon in pioneer of course Ugh, this hand is slow i think we're gonna mulligan we have a lot of lands and agent of treachery is almost a mulligan this is better our man is a little clunky but hopefully i mean if we're in a matchup where reflector mage is good this hand's insane we will put thraben inspector to the bottom can't cast it on turn one anyway, because of Glacial Fortress, so... Opponent, Blood Crypt. Untapped. And... Thought Seize. Alright. Sure. Sure, sure. Double sure, sure. Are we taking the Panharmonicon? Rakdos is one of the colors, thanks to, like, Coligan's Command, sometimes Angerous Rampage, that actually can deal with Panharmonicon pretty easily, main deck. Not the best of Panharmonicon matchups. Takes Flibblethip. All right, so opponent's on the hopefully mana screw us plan. All right, Glacial Fortress. Glacial Fortress, go. Come on, land. We need to land in the next two turns for sure. Opponent, untaps. Wow, opponent kept a one lander? One land thought sees? That's great. Ugh. All right, that's, well, <laughs> we can't say much because we're on two lands, double pin or monogod. We need a land so badly. Opponent, did they draw their land? 
They do. Blood Crypt, Untapped, and Dreadhorn Arcanist. Oh, please land. Please, please, Magic Gods. One time, one time, Magic Gods. All right, it's a land. That's good. So now we get to Fairy Time Raveler. Bounce Dreadhorn Arcanist. Pass the turn. Oh, that was close. That was close. Pota untaps. Land number three, untapped. Pota's down to 12 as well, which is worth pointing out. Wild Slash takes down to Fairy. Are we on the replay Arcanist plan? New no. opponent passing. Hmm. Why are they leaving up mana? All right. Well, we will too pass the turn. The whole mana screw battle. <laughs> Pout it. Untaps. Wow, a land again. The magic gods have smiled upon our opponent. Dreadhorn Arcanist. Um, yeah, let's spell Queller. Gotta do something with our mana. Opponent. Abrades. Yep. That's fine. We Now we can reflect your mage. We would... St wow. Huh. Okay. Well, <laughs> Flibblefip. Give us a land. Our opponent can do it. We can do it, right? All right. We found a land. Pass the turn. We're finally getting to the Panorbata Gods. A little slower than we wanted, but we're getting there. Opponent. We see the Braid. Another easy answer to Panorbaticon. Opponent. Pass it. Well, I mean, we're going to do it. If you blow it up, you blow it up, but... We're playing Panorbata God for a reason, and that is to cast it. Panorbaticon. I mean, if we get to untap with it, life's pretty good. Hopefully. Opponent. Didn't kill it at instant speed. Plays a land. Passing. You know what? Let's take another turn off. Panorbaticon. <laughs> Delaying our gratification <laughs> to make it even better once we finally cast something. This also means if our opponent has like an abrade or something and tries to wait until we cast something to do it, it's uh, not going to work as well with two Panarmonicons. Unfortunately, they can like kill our Flibble Fip if we try to blink it. Wouldn't mind just drawing a Flibble Fip. Eh, or Thraben Inspector. Thraben Inspector. Make some clues. And I think we actually just sack one to try to hit a land drop. All right. Well, we're still having land troubles, but we got some clues. Get in with Flibs. Maybe Flib Beatdown will get there. <laughs> Opponent is down to nine, just from hurting themselves and from Flibblethip damage. <laughs> the whole Flibblethip beats. Our deck does not have a fast clock, but it does get to the point of our opponent scooping quickly. So with two... <clears throat> Man, we're... With two Panormonicons. Uh-oh. Coligan's Command... All right, takes down Flibs, kills a Panormonicon. Sure. Opponent untaps. Field of Ruin. Not very good against us. Opponent passing. Lands? Chill. All right, new plan. Charming Prince. Scry to... And I guess we could have attacked first. Blink Thraben Inspector. Scry for lands. Oh my god, there's no lands. All right, bottom, bottom. Um... Sega Clue. Can we draw land? Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Uh, okay. That's not a lot of lands in, uh, the top, like, 20 cards of our deck. Well, we're gonna hit a bunch of them at some point. Thankfully, our opponent just has, like, no actual pressure. Opponent's drawn a ton of lands in a row after keeping a one-lander. Opponent. Passes. Alright, that's land. Prairie Stream. Play Prairie Stream. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent. Another Coligan's Command would be annoying. Alright, kills Charming Prince. Yup. Kills Thraben Inspector. Um. Well, let's. Felidair Guardian. Untap a couple lands. Charming Prince. Scry and Flicker Felidair Guardian. Uh, our opponent has another Fatal Push, apparently. Yup. Alright, well, opponent's out of cards, and we are not. We are very much not. We get to scry with Charming Prince. Um, yeah, I guess we'll keep, well, yeah, keep two lands. We got a million clues. We've been dying for lands. Sack a clue. Pass the turn. Opponent's out of cards. I mean, I think we're good. Opponent's been killing our stuff, but they have zero cards in hand. We have a million. Wild Slashers, Charming Prince, sure. Uh, about it. Passes. Well, crack some clues. Mostly want, like, a Flibble Fip. Something to draw his cards now. Teferi. All right, well, we might as well play Teferi. 
and opponent scoops it up, and we just ran our opponent out of cards. It was as simple as that. Just run him out of cards, win the game. The only bad news is we didn't really see much of what our opponent's doing as far as, like, sideboarding. Like, I could see... Okay, another Declaration in Stone seems good. Maybe over, like, a Thraben Inspector. Agent of Treachery doesn't feel that good. And maybe Lavinia? Actually, Angel of Serenity seems like it could be good. And let's just bring in one more Declaration in Stone. Run it like that. All we saw was, like, a pile of removal in Dreadhorn Arcanus. We didn't see much outside of that from our opponent's deck, so it was really hard... It's probably like a Pyromancer deck would be my guess, like Young Pyromancer. Mardu, or Rakdos, I guess, Pyromancer. Mountain for our opponent. Passes. I feel like our deck is very well set to fight through tons of removal. We just have, like, so much incidental card draw. Even in a matchup like this where Panharmonicon is a little sketchy, thanks to our opponent's removal. Opponent. Dreadhorde Arcadist. Yeah, well, we're probably just going to have to kill that. Plain Island. Declaration in stone. Pass the turn. Basically, Pioneer Path to Exile. <laughs> Two mana gives him a clue. At least it doesn't give him a land. Bonet untaps. Field of Ruin. And passes. Now, play a planes. Um, yeah, let's pass. I don't think there's any big rush. Leave up our Spell Queller. Opponent sacks the clue, draws a card. Opponent. What you got, what you got? No, ooh, not even a land? Ooh, okay. Huh. Opponent passing. And Glacial Fortress go. Now we're just gonna wait. Leave up Spell Queller forever, basically. Next turn we can Flibble Fip and still leave up Spell Queller. Or we can just go Shields Down and Cloud Blazer. Young, okay, Young Pyromancer. That will draw out a Spell Queller. Now we would love to draw Teferi to bounce Spell Queller. All right. Shields down, shields down. Let's draw some cards. Cloud Blazer. Draw two, gain two. We could have flibble fipped, had enough mana if we hit a Teferi, but odds are pretty low. Eh, all right, not a Teferi. Get in with Spell Queller. Hit our opponent. Now we go on the value plan, and eventually we hit Pandermonicon, and then our opponent is going to have a hard go of it. I'm expecting they can probably kill Spell Queller and get back Pyromancer. Yup, there's a Dread Boar. Pyromancer returns. Sure. Uh, opponent passes. Hmm. Well, go to combat. Get him with Cloud Blazer. Hit our opponent down to 16. Cloud Blazer. Draw some cards. Up to 24. Who? More. Who? Cla another Cloud Blazer and a Charming Prince. Well, I don't know if we even care about this young Pyromancer. Thraven is begged her go. And I mean, we're just going to draw cards. <laughs> and gain life and probably win with Cloud Blazers. <laughs> that seems like where we're heading. I mean, we'd still love to draw a Panharmonicon. But go ahead, opponent, make some 1-1s. One -ones. <laughs> we are okay with that. Ooh. All right, opponent's going to make a lot of 1-1s. One -ones. I still don't know if we're scared of that, though. Opponent passing. Come on, Panharmonicon. Planes. Well, one, two, three, four. Felidaire... Oh, we should have attacked first. Eh! I'm too excited about drawing cards and trying to find better Monocon to care about attacking, but we should have gotten in for two here first. Blank Cloud Blazer, draw some cards. And then Charming Prince. Blank Cloud Blazer, draw some cards. Combat, get him with Cloud Blazer. Oh, we're a Panamonicon away from going infinite. Oh, that would be sweet. Get in, hit our opponent. That's all we need is a Panamonicon. We even have enough mana to cast it all in the same turn. Hit our opponent down to 14. And we're going to draw a bunch of cards. Pass the turn. Cloud Blazer returns. We go up to 28. Yep. Opponent fatal pushes. Make some 1-1s. One sure. Panharmonicon. Panharmonicon for Pan Infinite. Come on. Come on, Magic Gods. Charming Prince. Cloud Blazer. Draw two. Panharmonicon? Ugh, not yet. All right. Pass the turn. Discard the eyelid. Oh, we need a Panharmonicon. Opponent plays the land. I mean, I think we're probably winning either way, but I would love to go infinite with Felidare Guardian. That would be the sweetest win. Dreadhorn Arcanist. And... Angress Rampage. Sacrifice a creature. Um... I think we'll just sacrifice a Cloud Blazer. Come on, Panharmonicon. Our opponent's even tapped out. This is the time if we draw it. Opponent. 
passes. Panharmonicon? No. Huh. Well, in that case, Teferi. Bounce Arcanist. Draw a card. Play a Plains. Cloud Blazer. Draw some cards. Oh, still no Panharmonicon. <laughs> All right, get him with Cloud Blazer. I mean, we're doing fine in terms of winning the game, but we're not doing fine in terms of fighting this Panharmonicon to go infinite. Discard a Hollowed Fountain. I mean, we're at 30 life. We've drawn 10 more cards in our opponent. Our hand is overflowing. We just need Panharmonicon. We don't even really care about this Teferi. If everyone wants to kill it, that's fine. So yeah, the combo, in case we don't see it, two Felidar Guardians plus Panharmonicon is infinite blinking and infinite mana. Since you can uh, get two Felidar Guardian triggers, one blinks the other Felidar Guardian, the other blinks whatever, lands to untap for infinite mana, eventually like Cloud Blazer to draw our deck after we have all of our mana, then we can Agent of Treachery to steal all of our opponent's permanence, and uh, that should that should draw the concession. <laughs> Found it. Culligan's command. Cloud Blazer and Clue. Okay. Yep. Mag some one ones. Uh, opponent. I mean, we'll find it eventually. We have to. Gonna kill Teferi. Yup. Uh, block and block. Teferi down. Hmm. All right. Let's go digging. Flibblefip. Draw a card. Panharmonicon. Well, in that case, Cloud Blazer. Draw two cards. Still no Panharmonicon. Uh, Flibblethip? Draw a card? Oh, finally! Okay. Get him with Cloud Blazer. Now we're just hoping our opponent taps out. And now we get to pull off our infinite combo. Opponent goes to ten. We pass. Also, we gotta dodge Thoughtseize for a turn. Discard a Plains. Bone it. All right, tap out. Tap out so you can't disrupt us and kill our Panharmonicon. Ooh, close. One mana would be fine. I think we can do it with one mana. They shouldn't have one mana artifact destruction. Oh, no, do it. Do it. Oh. Phone it. Arcanist. And passes. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. All right. Well, we have enough mana. One, two, three... Oh, we don't have enough mana. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We need eleven. All right, go to combat. Let's see if we can bait out a removal spell. Go to combat. Attack, attack. Maybe our opponent will just kill a cloud blazer. Okay, wild slash. Yes, 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 yes. That's what we wanted. Whoo! Okay. Now I think we're good to go infinite. Opponent takes two down to eight. But now the fun begins. It doesn't happen all that often, but when it happens, it is so sweet. So, one, two, three, four, Panharmonicon, Glacial Fortress, Felidair Guardian, uh, Blink You, Blink You, draw some cards, gain some life, Blink Felidair Guardian, Blink You, Blink You, yes, draw some cards, gain some life. Now, oh, is the Agent of Treachery our very bottom card? Did we put that in the bottom of our deck? Blink you. Blink you. Oh, I think we did put it on the bottom, didn't we? Oh, we can't mill ourselves out. We must have scryed since then, right? Blink, Felidare Guardian. Blink you. Blink you. Yes. Draw some cards. Yes. Oh, man. Are we going to kill ourselves? Well, if we kill ourselves, at least we killed ourselves doing what we love. <laughs> I really want to steal all of our opponent's permanents. Yes. Yes. Okay, this will work. Now we blink Felidare Guardian, blink a land. Blink Felidare Guardian, blink a land. Blink Felidare Guardian, blink a land. So all we got to do is untap all of our lands. Blink, Felidare Guardian, blink a land. I think we need to scry with a Charming Prince. Blink, Felidare Guardian, blink a land. I mean, we have infinite mana. The question is, how long do we want to spend untapping it? Felidare Guardian, land. So infinite mana achieved, because we could just float lands in between as we're doing this. Felidare Guardian, land. Um, Thraben Inspector, land. Okay, so now we'll let the chain stop. Sure. And now we Charming Prince. 
scry, scry. Trying to get to that agent of treacheries. Bottom, bottom. Ugh. Huh. Okay, charming prince. Scry, scry. Yeah, we. I think we have this now. Scry, scry. Oh, an opponent! Okay. Opponent scoops it up. What we would have done. What we would have done. Just because we did get to see it. Which, I don't blame our opponent for scooping. But, we were trying to get to the point where we would find our Agent of Treacheries. Which, we had put on the bottom of our deck, I believe. Where's our... Oh, do we sideboard it out? Oh my goodness. Am I that much of... <laughs> uh, all right so we are looking for a card that we sideboarded out i'm sure i will hear about that in the comments so i'm going to revise that statement once i realized assuming our opponent hadn't scooped once i realized that we had sideboarded out agent of treacheries uh what we would have done is we would have cast a reflector mage to bounce something then we would have went back to the infinite felidar guardian loop bounced everything so opponent has no permanence left then we just play out our hand uh play out our angel of serenity maybe get some stuff back from the graveyard and beat our opponent down next turn if we had agent of treachery at our deck we were going to find it we were going to uh go back to the infinite mana loop with a felidar guardian make enough mana to cast agent of treachery then go through the infinite blink loop with agent of treachery steal literally every one of our opponent's permanence then we'd pass the turn with all of our permanence all of our opponent's permanence and beat him down so uh yeah this deck's legit i mean we're just we're killing people with pioneer monocon including some of the best decks in the format the <laughs> the sahili copycat combo decks eh, not bad not bad not bad not bad at all all right sweet sweet so what do we learn this week about pioneer monocon in pioneer of course and the deck was as awesome as i hoped it would be we played five matches we won five matches and even better we played theoretically some of the best decks in the format we beat copycat twice two different builds uh the vanifar build that i think yo man five has been uh, kind of championing and doing really well with and just a kind of more standard ish four color copycat build we also beat a Rakdos Pyromancer deck, we took down a Soul Flayer deck that looked really sweet, and we beat a green-red, like, ramp through the breach, cheap big things in a play deck. Basically, Pioneer Monocon was insane. It was so awesome, it's so much fun, it's so good, and I played a few more matches just because I love Pioneer Monocon, and my overall record with the deck is something like 9-2 and two at this point or something, so I don't know, I kind of feel like Pioneer Monocon might actually have a chance in the format. I think if you could beat decks like Copycat, which is probably, like, bannably good. That's the deck that most people are thinking could be bad. Uh, if you can compete with those style of decks and beat other decks, you might actually have a deck that is reasonably effective in the format, and the deck could just grind. We have good tempo-y plays all the way up the curve. Charming Prince is such a big deal for this deck. We get good removal, we get all this card draw, and then eventually Panharmonicon comes down and either puts away the game with just a ton of card advantage, or, even though it didn't happen very much once in a while you get the double fair to the dare guardian combo kills which are just hilarious and awesome so overall i am thrilled with how the deck performed i couldn't really ask for more and i kind of think panharmonicon might actually have a chance in this format it's not as fast and degenerate as modern is uh, and i feel like maybe this is a place where a deck the speed of panharmonicon can actually compete and just outvalue people yes there are blowouts there are braids there are coligans commands there are a few decks we saw knight of autumns after sideboarding so there are decks that can deal with panharmonicon but i think the thing i love about this deck is it functions really well even without panharmonicon Monicon. Like, Panharmonicon is basically our finisher, but without our namesake card, we can still play and win a really fair game. Just like Thraven Inspector into Charming Prince, Reflector Mage, your creature, Felidar Guardian, Blink Reflector Mage, Reflector Mage, your creature, Cloud Blazer, draw some cards, and maybe Teferi, bounce something, do it again. Like, we can win this kind of normally blue-white tempo game, and then Panharmonicon is just the card that closes out the game and puts things over the top. I also just love the consistency of the mana base. If you watch watched the stream last week when we tried Abzan, we tried Rally the Ancestors, we really struggled with like three color decks just being clunky and the mana base is really painful. So just having this very consistent blue-white mana base where other than 
good prairie stream once in a while. Our lands basically just come into play tapped all the time through the whole game. It felt really nice, and I kind of feel like this is more or less where you want to be in Panharmonicon right now. Yes, could we splash maybe red for Sahili Rai? That might actually, Sahili Rai would actually be sweet in this deck. Is it worth taxing our mana and making it less consistent to do that? I don't really know. That's something to keep in mind, and I gotta say, there will definitely be more Panharmoniconing in the future. Uh, just like when Panharmonicon came in standard, and we played blue-white, and then we played like these monocolor artifact versions, and we played mono-black, there's a ton of Panharmonicon decks. I want to play mono-black Panharmonicon with Grey Merchant. I want to play some Vanifar Panharmonicon, probably going into three colors. So there's a ton of different builds of Panharmonicon I want to get to in Pioneer, and the possibilities just feel endless right now. And I love this format. I love the deck. It's awesome to have Panharmonicon again. So hopefully this was as much fun for all of you as it was for me, because I loved it. I almost forgot how much I love Panharmonicon. In this deck, in this format, just kind of rekindled my love for this deck and this card, and it was amazing. So hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more Panharmonicons or Pioneer Harmonicons or Pioneer, let me know in the comments, and uh, yeah. I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.